I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. My name is Cindy. I've thought a lot about sharing what has been happening around here, and to be honest, when it all started, I had no idea what was going on. We've lived in this house for 20 years. It's in a beautiful area in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. When we bought this house, we were traveling 9 to 10 months of the year, only coming home occasionally. This pattern continued until 2015, when we started a different path. My husband is a speaker, professor, and does work for the State Department, so he was still very busy. At that point, I was home alone 98% of the time. I started to hear noises in the woods at night, and knocking. The master bedroom has a balcony off it that faces into the woods. It's at least 14 feet off the ground. At night, I would open the door to the balcony and just have the screen door so I could hear the frogs, etc. That's when I heard the noises. We have all matter of wildlife here. Fox, coyotes, an occasional bear, and lots of deer. We had a group of deer, at least 30, that slept in the side woods next to my house. I hadn't been home for any length of time in years, so I was settling in. One night early on, about 1 a.m., I heard something coming through the woods. It sounded like a bulldozer. It was loud. Just about the time I got up, something hit the balcony so hard it shook the whole room. The balcony is wrought iron, so it was loud. It scared me to death. I grabbed the flashlight out of the drawer and went onto the balcony. I didn't see anything. It had only been a few seconds, and nothing was there. This became a regular occurrence. Something would hit the balcony, and I would run out there, and nothing was there. I started to keep the flashlight right next to me on the bed, so maybe I could catch whoever was doing this. Then I heard the screams. It was about 3 a.m., and I got up to let my little dog out. He was getting up in age, and I had to take him out frequently. I'm standing out in the yard with him, and from across the street, I heard what sounded like the gates of hell opened. Oh, my God. It started really low and went really high. It was like a gut punch. I grabbed my dog mid-pee and ran in the house. I was terrified. My heart was pounding, and I couldn't calm down. That was the point that I started to look around on the Internet for answers. I was skeptical about what I found. I was sure that it had to be something other than a Sasquatch. I visited with my neighbor the next day to see if they had heard that horrific scream. They said no, but a few days before, they were out on their deck, and there was something that was growling low in the woods. My friend got up to see what it was, and she saw eyes. It sufficiently scared them, and they went inside. Shortly thereafter, a lady from the subdivision came walking through the neighborhood and saw us in our yard. She said, this is going to sound strange, but have you heard weird noises in the woods? I said yes. So now I knew that I wasn't alone. Someone else had heard it too. Things kept progressing, hitting the balcony, hitting the house, hitting the garage door, all around my bedroom. As I would take my dog out at night, sometimes the minute I would step foot on the front porch, there would be a knock from the other side of my driveway. This happened often. One night, I was out with my dog and I could hear an owl. It was crazy loud. It was making all kinds of noise. Then it messed up, and its voice cracked. I started to walk to where it was coming from. It was on the other side of my driveway at the tree line. I stopped so the car would be between me and whatever it was. I had my phone, and I took a pic. When it flashed, I could see the outline of something, hands and a head. It's so weird. It was like I could see the outline, but no details, but the hands and feet were lighter colored than the body. I really don't know how to describe it. I quickly went back inside. My husband was home and he heard it, but I know it wasn't a typical owl because I hear them all the time. This was different. I'm not sure chronologically what happened next, but the weirdness kept up. One night, my dog went crazy. He took me to the other side of the house, the garage side, and took me to the outside door to the deck. We both went outside. I was leaning on the railing, looking around, when something huffed at me. Well, it was like a huff and a growl combined. I was standing there, not believing what was happening. Then to my left, a tree branch snaps off really high up in a tree and falls to the ground. The dog didn't make a noise, and we both just turned and went inside. I locked the door and prayed that nothing was going to bother me. The next thing that happened was we had just gotten a new puppy. We lost our old dog, so after a bit, we got a pup. He was learning to listen and was very impulsive. 
We were standing on the driveway, and all of a sudden, he took off through the woods. I went after him. We have about four acres, three of which are wooded, so he was gone on an adventure. I followed him down through the woods, then caught up with him and brought him back home. I didn't go back the way I came in. I came back to the house at a different angle. When I almost got to the house, I seen tracks everywhere. I went and got some casting material and casted a few. Anyway, I was getting tired of all this. The next time the balcony got hit, I lost it. I went out on the balcony. I was crying and I screamed at them. I told them they were scaring me. Everything went quiet. Everything had always happened between 1 and 3 a.m. After this, no hitting of the balcony ever again. Then the shooting started behind my house during that same time period between 1 and 3 a.m. That went on multiple times a week. A few days later, I took the dog for a walk and I noticed a strange tree structure on my property. One last thing, not long ago, I was on my balcony looking at the flying squirrels. They come to my bird feeder at night. They had their babies with them and I was watching from my balcony door. They're pretty used to me so I can step out and they will keep eating. I didn't want to scare the babies, however. I wanted to video them so my husband could see them. He was traveling. I got my flashlight and I was trying to bounce some light so I could video them. They had all gone up to the window above me, so I stepped out to place the flashlight where I could hit them with enough indirect light to film them. I pointed the flashlight down at the ground and I hit two things that were very hairy sitting there watching me, maybe eight to ten feet from the balcony. One was in clear view, the other I could see off to its side. It scared me to death. I got inside the door and they took off, much like I did. I saw them for a few seconds, but more importantly, I had my phone because I was trying to take pics of the flying squirrels. My finger was on the button and I got pics of it. I was so shaken up, I didn't realize that I had pics until I settled down. I've shown them to a few people. They say it isn't, but don't know what it is. I saw it. It was covered in hair. It was on all fours, and it had turned away from me so I didn't see its face. I saw what looked like an arm. It had wide shoulders and a slightly pointed head. I think it was a juvenile. There are many more things that happened over time, but I wanted to share my experience. Thank you. These are photos from the witness. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you enjoyed today's video, here's one you don't want to miss. Also, if you have a story you'd like to share on this channel, email me, lynnsmith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I hope to hear from you soon.